Good morning and welcome to New York Viewpoint. I'm Ken Rosado. Are you feeling stressed out lately about money matters or job issues? Well, this morning we have a guest with a holistic approach to dealing with stress. Coming up, we bring you some holistic tips to help if the economy has you a bit stressed out. We'll be right back. Welcome back to New York Viewpoint. I'm Ken Rosado. Tough economic times have many people stressed out. People are worried about their jobs and how they're going to be able to maintain their lifestyles. Our guest this morning offers a holistic approach to coping with tension. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Michael Finkelstein, who's a founder of Skillful Living Concept, and comes to us from the Sunraven Healthy Living Center. Thank you so much for being here. Pleasure. When times get tough like this, you must see a huge increase of people who are stressed out. Absolutely. It's, this is um, a time when I can't recall seeing so many people in so many different ways finding stress in their lives. So what is the skillful living concept about? Well, it's a term, skillful living, that I've coined and I'm writing about that describes uh, our health in broader terms than we typically hear about it when we go to a physician, for instance, where the focus tends to be primarily the physical body. I think skillful living implies that to be fully healthy, one requires a healthy environment, a healthy physical body, a healthy mo emotional state, relationships, Society in itself contributes to our, our health and therefore skillful living and it sort of describes a way and approach we would attend to ourselves uh, to reach the highest state of health by being mindful of all those different things simultaneously. You sound like a DO. Didn't they used to talk about this years ago? They absolutely did. <laughs> you know, um, the origins of holistic medicine and holistic thinking is not necessarily uh, restricted to doctors of osteopathy, but that school of medical training mm -hmm. founded in the late 19th century really described a more holistic view than we currently you know, recognize from the typical Western medical system now so dominant. Do you think that more and more doctors um, can and will latch on to this concept, especially now, seeing so many people stressed out and seeing how it has such a negative impact? We know about cortisol mm -hmm. and the, the, the negative effects uh, of stress. Do you think that more doctors are aware, have the time, or take the time with their patients to go over all these other issues? I think there's a growing awareness by the medical system and the establishment and physicians specifically. However, I don't know that they have the time, the means, or the tools or training to really help people that much more than they're doing now. So your goal ultimately is what? Well, my goal, as, I, as I've evolved in my own practice, starting from the tr very traditional orientation of a westernized physician to what I do now, is to help people navigate a path which includes all that's offered by the Western medical system, but integrates other approaches that help people deal with those other variables, like their environments, like their mental emotional state, and uh, I think my background now includes training in things as basic as nutrition, which for the most part, most physicians really have a very limited understanding mm -hmm. of. Garbage in, garbage out. Very much so. And also breathing. You do mm -hmm. talk about breathing. Show us some breathing techniques that maybe people should be practicing. And what are some of them? Well, the, the simplest thing to realize is that when we're stressed or anxious, we tend to breathe very shallow. Mm -hmm. So that if you feel your belly while you're breathing, you will notice when you're breathing shallow that your belly doesn't really move that much. Um, and that you're breathing then in, mostly in your chest. When we're relaxed, or if you observe a dog uh, that you just had on, for instance, mm -hmm. or a baby breathing, you'll see that their belly moves in and out as they breathe. The difference is the movement of the diaphragm. Um, and when we're relaxed, we push our diaphragm, we allow the diaphragm to descend, pushing our stomach out, but it's a fuller breath. Mm -hmm. The movement of the diaphragm stimulates a nerve called the vagal nerve, which actually sends signals through our body of relaxation. But the opposite is true. When we don't stimulate the vagal nerve through diaphragmatic breathing, we stay tense. And so the trick is to just take some deep breaths and practice moving your abdomen in and out while so you're So is it a catch-22? The, the stress causes you not to breathe deeply, and not breathing deeply doesn't stimulate the vagal nerve, and so it's a self-perpetuating exactly. mess. Exactly. You, you get more stressed by being stressed. Right. So a physician well-known now for this, called you know Dr. Herbert Benson from Harvard, described the relaxation response. And a very... Um, fundamental aspect of that response is to observe breathing and learn to expand the breathing cycle. Right, what are some of the warning signs we should look out for? Well, I think if you catch yourself not breathing well, sighing is the uh, 
the self regulating mechanism when that we do when we've been tense for a while we'll take a sigh breath which is a very deep breath when you notice yourself sighing you can be sure that something's going on that's creating tension people carry tension in the back of their neck mm. you know in their shoulders uh, sometimes they have specific foci of ailment like their low back their headaches things of that sort of develop so when you get that signal uh, then it's time to start tuning into what you might do to unwind a little bit. And what about sleep? You, you mentioned nutrition. Well, I'd like to hit that in just a moment, but sleep. Are people, people think they could stay up till 2 in the morning and, right. and then go to sleep for 4 hours, get up at 6 and have a full right. day. But what does that do to them? To well, their there's, bodies? there's more about sleep than just how tired you are the following day. In my thoughts about environmental stress, you know, I think there's two things that we can do. One is the, the immediate reaction to recognizing stress, like deep breathing, but the other is something I would call proactive activity, which is more along the lines of the skillful living concept, which is to, between episodes of stress, what are you doing? And sleep, regular good quality and good quantity sleep, is very significant because when we're not well rested, uh, then our stress threshold is lower. Mm -hmm. And therefore, anything that happens subsequently in the day is just going to be magnified. Nutrition. Well, there are certain foods that we can eat that will relax us and some foods that will again change the threshold for stress. In general, while nutrition is a very complicated subject, the simple answer is um, refined carbohydrates probably contribute the most to our stress experience. Uh, and so processed grains in the form of cereals, pasta, bread, cakes, cookies, those are things that affect us in certain ways that will probably make us a little bit more sensitive to mm -hmm. stress. And what about uh, being able to cope with the, the possibility of losing one's job in this, in this day and age? Well, you know, that's a reality that so many people are facing. So without focusing on how you do better at your job and your performance becomes more the issue, the, the fact is that we may need to be prepared for, for the inevitable. And there's crisis in everyone's life, whether it's jobs or uh, illness and other things. And so I believe that skillful living, which is this approach that you apply on a regular daily basis allows you to deal with whatever comes at you. It's basic, but we ignore it. And it's great advice and a great technique, and I wish you the best. And may this gospel be preached to the whole world, uh, as this is a Sunday morning, right. uh, because it sounds like it could only make for a better society and a healthier one as well. Doctor, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Appreciate it.